my name is Zaldo. I'm the creator of NLPForums.com, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show. This is your host, Daniel Anthony. Co-hosting with me today is Norman Sanzo. Hello there, everybody. Hi, Norman. So, tell us about your day. It was rather interesting. I'm not the host for this week. Mm-hmm. Yes, pretty obvious. And guest starring on this week's show is Feld. Hello, everyone. Hey, Feld. How are you? I'm all right. Chilling here in Varna, Bulgaria, on a trip to visit my family and go to the beach. All that good stuff. Wow, that sounds awesome. So, Feld, before we get started to the episode, we have four basic questions to ask you. Our first question is, of course, the question that we ask almost every brony we encounter. Who is best pony? Twilight Sparkle. No doubt about it. Any reason why? Well, I've always been the nerd at school my whole life. And the easiest way to put it is that Twilight Sparkle is a purple female pony version of me in real life, really. So I can relate to her very well. In addition to that... I've always been a big fan of fantasy fiction, and I particularly like fantasy fiction that has lots of magic and spells, good stuff like that in it. And seeing as Twilight Sparkle is one of the most powerful magicians in Equestria, that's just interesting from a personal perspective. It's really cool to watch her doing some of her more amazing spells, like when she did her memory injection spell on her friend, and uh, season two opener, uh, or when she subdued the Ursa Minor. So you want to see all the big all stuff. Cool stuff. Yeah, I like all the big stuff she does, but on a personal level, I can also relate to her really well. She feels a bit like an outcast, and she feels a bit estranged from the people around her, Well, often just prefers to do her own thing. Okay, it's cool. sort of a little ironic that I ended up running one of the largest pony forums on the internet, <laughs> seeing as I consider myself to be antisocial in real life. So, uh, I'm guessing that your favorite episode would be a Twilight episode, right? So, which is it? Oh boy, that's a very hard one to choose. To be honest, I've never really thought too seriously about uh, your favorite episode question, because I just, I just like all of them so much. So, all of them! Um, cool! <laughs> is that all of them a valid answer? Well, we never had one, so that's be the first. Yep. So you're saying all the episodes are your favorite? Well, not so much that. There are some that I like better than others, but... All right, how about this? Are... Season 1 or Season 2? Eh, I'm leaning towards Season 2. Okay. So, we all like to know also, how did you become a brony? I believe it started back when I saw some pony avatars popping up on my Wii U forum and also on 3DS forums, which I lurk around at, even though I don't own it. And... I was sort of just hazily aware that there's this new My Little Pony fandom thing happening, but I never really paid too much attention to it. At some point, though, when it spread to my Wii U forum, I decided to find the episodes, the opening episodes, and my comment after I was done watching them was, and I quote, the show is surprisingly not bad. You commented on YouTube? No, I commented on my Wii U forum. Oh, I see. I started a topic about it there. And I remember I actually said, um, I actually said there in my topic that I I didn't think I would ever dedicate a significant portion of my life to this show, but I enjoyed watching it. It reminded me of some of the cartoons I watched in my childhood. However, I remained a closet brony and didn't tell my parents anything about it for a few weeks after that. um, I got through about half of the first season and then found myself in a long road trip with my mom to Seattle and decided to fess up to her then. Why? Would you bored and wanted to watch ponies in the ride or what? Well, I feel a little guilty keeping, keeping secrets like that from my parents because I'm on pretty good terms with them. I decided that car ride would be the perfect place to tell my mom oh, okay. about my new interest. Because prior to then, I was like totally into Nintendo and all things Nintendo. And my mom was getting tired that the only thing I could talk about was Nintendo. Oh, okay. And she told me to go find a new interest. 
<laughs> okay. Wow, okay. She was pretty accepted after I told her, well, the new thing I like. And I actually convinced her to watch an episode on my laptop when we arrived at our hotel that night. And, well, much to my delight, she actually liked it too. Oh my. Wow. So, yeah, my mom now um, she does get annoyed at the amount of time I spend doing pony stuff. But she realizes that the show isn't complete garbage. When a new episode comes out, she usually watches it with me. Oh, wow, that's cool. Because down here, it's hard to even get friends to watch. And whenever one guy comes to it and says, Hey, I managed to get my friend to watch. He's like, whoa, achievement unlocked. <laughs> yeah, well, I got my mom to watch it. She doesn't really ever watch an episode more than once. She doesn't like, watch it on her off time. But she's supportive of what I do. So that actually brings us to our last question, I mean, of the four main questions. What is your friends' and family's reaction to the show and your love for the show? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell are you up to? <laughs> okay, that's your friends. Well, but... friends or family? More like friends, but I can tell my family sometimes thinks the same. <laughs> Although, with that said, I do have a couple of friends who started watching it and are also bronies. Mm. One of them actually called the show gay when I first told him about it. And the next day, he just quietly said to me at school, um, he just whispered to me, Rainbow Dash is the best pony. <laughs> mm. Wow. <laughs> you have no idea how much we dream of hearing that. <laughs> that every day we go, to, we go to class or something like that, we go to work, we go to class, and then we, we just expect somebody to drop us a passing expression, but it doesn't happen. Yeah, well, my friend became a brony, and it's safe to say, Rainbow Dash is his favorite pony. Another one of my friends, he doesn't like the idea of liking the show, but I, I managed to force him to watch uh, two episodes, and his opinion went from absolutely hating it to neutral. <laughs> he's afraid of watching another episode because he's afraid a third episode will turn that neutral opinion to positive. Ah, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> Oh, he's a four-episode trap. You must. You must. You're quite the brony evangelist. I'm a brony if I manage to get him to watch one more episode. I already brought him from absolutely hating it to feeling indifferent. Oh, you are quite cool. the brony evangelist. But uh, oh, among, among friends, you're not, you're not technically a closet brony, right? No, they all know I'm a brony. And they make fun of me for it, but it's really just high school trash talk. They're all good ah, with it. And they don't hate me for it. I just think it's funny. Ah, I see. Okay. My family really feels the same way, although my mom in particular is a bit more supportive than my sister and my dad. Ah, okay. What about your sister? Did you get her to watch? No, I haven't gotten her to watch it yet. Although I did play some Eurobeat Brony for her in the car, and she liked that. Wow. Mm, Okay. So, let's uh, move on right now to housekeeping, and we don't have anything to clean up, like, as usual, Norman never has anything to clean up, so basically, I don't have a mess either. Oh, wait, 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 um, if we want to be nitpicky about it, our website is almost at 3,000 page views. Wow, okay. Well, that's about it, but nothing much. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah, you heard it from Norman himself. We're almost at 3,000, so go to our website, what are you waiting for? Hit it up, make it hit 3,000. So now that we're done with housekeeping, now let's move into the news. So for the first news topic of the week, we have another soul soft newborn pony toy spotted. This pony toy, her name is Princess Skyla, and anyone remember the soul soft newborn toys? Do you all remember those the Pinkie Pie ones? I wish I could forget. Unfortunately, I can't say I really ever did much in the way of my little pony toys, so I don't really have too much to comment on here. No, but have you seen the, the Pinkie Pie one? I don't believe I have. Oh, I see. Pictures, okay. in, pictures in the show notes. Pictures in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Alright, so basically... Is that it? Uh, yeah. that, those are the new ones. No, the bottom one are the new ones. The top one are the old ones. Ah, I see, yeah. And by oh, the way, they're boy. all G4. <laughs> they're all G4. This is supposed to be G4. Yes. Yeah, all G4. <laughs> So recently over at MLP Arena, a thread has popped up discussing about the new toy and its character. And the character's name is Princess Skylar. It seems that a lot of fans are speculating that Princess Skylar is the daughter of Shining Armor and Princess Cadence. Hmm. They just got married, like what, a couple of months back? Well, time flows differently from Earth and Equestria, so... uh. There isn't a set amount of time that passes between 
between episodes. I mean, look at Winter Wrap Up. That kind of happened sandwiched between two summer episodes. True. But let's talk about Skylar. Ain't she cute? Sarcasm. Okay, fine. The picture on the box art is cute because it's a filly. That's about it. <laughs> Remove the pony from the box, please. I'm gonna have nightmares tonight. Fel, what do you think of Princess Skylar? This can't be G4. <laughs> I know, right? It reminded me of G3 when I looked at it at first. I got no idea why they use this model for the toys. Even Spike looks a bit off. Oh, okay. Spike is cute as a baby dragon. No, he's not. I mean, as a okay. baby dragon. In the show. In the show. In the Cutie Mark Chronicles, he was cute. In that model, he is not cute. <laughs> okay. Spike doesn't quite look like that in the show. He looks like a newborn. He's not exactly a newborn in the show. I mean, in no. the episode where he was hatched in uh, Cutie Mark Chronicles. That was the newborn Spike. That was the newborn Spike. This isn't the newborn Spike. <laughs> I'm imagining people flipping tables just because of this. Uh, let's move on, let's move on. I was at Toys R Us this afternoon. Okay, so Norman, why don't you handle the next one? Okay, so in the next story is more origin story from Lauren Faust. At the last BronyCon, one of the security guys was assigned to be Lauren Faust's bodyguard. During the time that he spent with Lauren, he asked her some questions about the origins of the show, like the characters and the world. And all of the answers are really interesting. Links can be found in the show notes. Have any of you guys watched the video on YouTube? Actually, I'll be honest. I have have not. Oh. Well, um, it was pretty interesting. Like, Lauren Faust said that Twilight Sparkle was inspired by her mother, something like that. Oh, okay. And if I remember right, like Fluttershy was inspired by her younger self. I thought Twilight Sparkle was inspired by Twilight's mother. No, um... By her own mother from G1. Nah, it, I think that was the color pattern or something like that by name, but her characteristic was from her mother. Oh, I see. And Rainbow Dash was Firefly, can't use because of... Well, the show Firefly on TV, and so on. And also, um, Applejack? I can't really remember what he said, but there's a few interesting things. Like, Cantalot was inspired by the Lord of Rings. Where was that? I forgot. Lord of the Rings? Okay. Yeah, that was awesome. Well, if you want to watch the video, you can find the link in the show notes. It's right there. Yeah, true. Go watch it if you have the time, and it's fun. So, um, Fel, why don't you handle the last news topic of the... Show notes today. Pink Pie is best pony on the Citadel. So let's have a look at this. In conjunction with their multiplayer event, Operation Olympus, the official Mass Effect Facebook page just posted a picture of Commander Pinkie Pie on their wall. Oh man. Unfortunately, I'm like the one guy on the planet who doesn't play Mass Effect or is really familiar with it, but I have to say, all the ponies that we've been seeing are popping up at companies like uh, Mozilla, and now Bioware, that's it's pretty cool. How many are there? I think there's Mozilla, there's Mojang, there's Valve. Where else have ponies been popping up? Um, I think Ubisoft was trying to get their own mascot, it's but not... did they get one? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think... It knew all admitted that she was a brony. Yeah, Valve is basically already under a brony, so <laughs> Mojang, because Notch admitted it as well. Mm-hmm. Links can be found in the show notes. Alright, that wraps up our news for the week. So now let's head on over to guest time today. Our guest is Feld of Feldo. He is the administrator and owner of MLP Forums. And also he's about to talk to us about his upcoming project, a really exciting one called Pony FM. My name is Feldo. Some people call me Feld. I'm probably best known in the Brony fandom for being the owner of MLPforums.com, which is one of the fastest growing and largest forum communities dedicated to My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. However, just running a pony forum isn't really enough for me, so I begun work on a small little network of sites, and the first one of them will be Pony FM, which you can get to at httpony.fm. Pony FM is designed to be the brony equivalent of Bandcamp, with a few little extra features sprinkled on top to uh, make it a little more homey and a better choice for brony artists to upload their music to over Bandcamp or SoundCloud or even YouTube. Pony FM is inspired by some of the other sites that have popped up dedicated to specific niches, like, um, for example, 
um, Pony Square and iPro Pony, which are Ponyfied equivalents of Facebook, and Fimfiction.net, which is a Ponyfied version of Fanfiction.net. Pony FM is the Ponyfied version of Bandcamp, basically. Ooh, this sounds so, awesome. Yeah, it's great. So um, tell us a bit more about Pony FM and um, how you're going to be working with any um, people that you have on board with you right now or any brony musicians who are going to be part of the project? Pony FM, as the idea, had actually existed for about two years. It wasn't originally going to be a pony site. Um, but once I, once I got into My Little Pony, then... And I decided that I realized uh, the pony community lacked uh, a nice music hosting site. So I took it upon myself to reform my original idea to become a pony music hosting site. Pony FM is still relatively early in development, even though the idea has been around for a while. I've been incredibly busy with MLP forums and also keeping up with school. I'm in grade 11. Well, I'm going into grade 12 next year, but my grade 11 year was incredibly busy because I had three sciences at once, I'm a year ahead in math, so on and so forth. Stereotypical nerd schedule. Now I see why Twilight's your favorite pony. Wow. <laughs> pony FM, unfortunately, comes on to back burner then. But thanks to the managerial reforms I make at MLP for, the fact that my grade 12 year is just going to be lighter than my grade 11 year, I'm really able to dedicate a lot more time on working on Pony FM. Because the whole thing is my own custom software, unlike MLP forums, which uses the IPS community suite. Ooh, so okay, this so is you mentioned interesting. that uh, Pony FM was in, it had the idea had been around for two years and was initially not supposed to be a pony site. So what did what was it initially supposed to be? It was supposed to be a, something equivalent to Tinder. Deck originally. So just ah. a simple site that you upload an M3 to and you leave it there. Not much to it really, I'll be honest. Something just a simple audio hosting site. Yeah, very simple. It was something like, it was supposed to be the MP3 equivalent of Imager. But ah, nice. it evolved and I really wanted to do something really cool and awesome for the, for the Brony fandom. So I changed it to something a lot more ambitious and I think a lot more interesting. And also something that's a lot more likely to ever go anywhere. Ah, I see. Because I've, I've been looking around. Have you have you found a single web service that hasn't been ponified? Bandcamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And anything, any other sites, you know, there, there's a ponified Facebook. Someone even did up like, uh, there's Cloudsdale, which is a cloud management suite, if I'm not mistaken. There's so many forums. YouTube hasn't been ponified yet. But really, does YouTube need to be ponified? I think thanks to YouTube, everything is from started Ponies from have there. have taken over by YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. True, but, you know, why not? <laughs> true. So, uh, this is just another question I we all ask every guest since I started being obnoxious about it. How did you come up with your current name, Fel- Feldo? There's a lot less to it than you might think. The honest truth is, when I was 12 or so, um... I had been using several other names on the internet up until that point, but I never really liked any of them. And I always found that other people used the same one. They weren't very creative. So I decided well, one day I would sit down on a chair and not get up until I thought of a new name for myself that I would hopefully keep for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. Three hours later, fellow. Uh, wow, that, that... That's how it happened. <laughs> there was no like inspiration or anything behind it? Not really. That is the an thing awesome I like origin story. Feldo is that it's a it's a rather generic name, and in case I ever uh, drop like one of my fandoms, um, for example, if I was to ever not be a brony anymore, I wouldn't be stuck with the name like Pony Lover four hundred sixty nine. Oh, okay. That's very that's very good thinking because I my my email has been Leviosa six two six, and that's my old nickname. It's a it's a fusion of Harry Potter and the Lilo and Stitch fandoms, both of which I'm not very active in anymore. Yeah, whenever I choose some kind of name for myself, I, I try not to put anything specific into it like that because you never know when your interests might change. Yeah. True, true. I have no intention of ever like losing interest in My Little Pony anytime soon, but you never know. Yeah. Besides, it's a bit more brandable, too. Yeah, yeah, true. It, it, it took me a while to learn how to pronounce it. I was wondering, is it felt zero? 
everyone always always wonders whether it's Feldo or Feld Zero. It's Feldo. I don't I don't tend to pronounce numbers in names because of how people put four hundred or nine oh one or something like that in the name, and it seems awkward because you don't know if you're supposed to read it the American style or the British style, and you start getting all confused. Daniel, you said you were a hipster. I mean, hipster use numbers in their name. Well, I'm even more hipster right now. I use a full stop. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying Pinky on Facebook, S-T dot P-I-N-K-I-E. And a lot of people ask me, where did that Pinky come from? It wasn't Pinky Pie. I had that name before I was a brony. So, Fel, do you have a pony sona? Yes, I do. Oh, cool. Um, what is it? Well, my pony sona is a blue alicorn. And I'm aware of the negative stigma associated with alicorns. But a bunch of people thought it was fitting that I should be an alicorn seeing as I'm a little bit of an entrepreneur of sorts in the pony fandom. And I'll be honest, I like having the, both the ability to perform magic and fly. So there we are. I totally feel you. I have an Alicorn Pony Sona as well. Well, some people thought I actually ha- I actually deserve one, so I went for it. Errol at Donsboro on MLP Forum, who is one of the global moderators, she designed my Pony Sona for me because... I'm an absolutely hopeless artist. So am I, don't worry. I can draw ponies yeah. with stick figures. So I basically told her to use blue and purple in the design and have at it. So what's the cutie mark? The cutie mark is a laptop computer with some magical sparks emanating from it. Ooh. It represents my, my lifelong love for computers and what I feel is my special talent in programming. And the magical sparks, they don't really mean much human-wise, but um, I like to think that my pony Sona is efficient in magic. So that's what those are for. Oh, with your website, I think it's running magically well. <laughs> hey, um, Felt, do you want to add anything more to Pony FM? Right, with Pony FM, one thing I didn't mention was that even though the site is really early in development, I have managed to get a partnership with Everfree Radio. So through that partnership, I have gotten Mando Pony and The Living Tombstone aware of the site's existence, and they have expressed interest in being some of the site's earliest alpha and beta testers. Oh, oh that's awesome. I that's cool. Get to that point. So one thing I don't want to happen is to launch the site and there be nothing on it. So I did things to keep that from happening to MLP forums, which resulted in about 10,000 posts in its first week. Wow. And I've got plans for to, to do the same with Pony FM. Yeah, I was so there I, for MLP forums day one. It was pretty crazy, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I'm user number 78. Oh, uh, I wish I was there too. I woke up yeah. and I saw that email in my inbox. MLP forums is open and yay. Uh, you want to know a little fun fact? Yeah, sure. Um, yes, MLP Forums had a pretty crazy first day because I sent out that opening email to over 200 people. <laughs> you might you might have noticed that Pony FM has a similar be notified when we launch form yeah. on the front page. Mm-hmm. Well, well, let me just say that more than twice as many people are currently on the list <laughs> as there were for MLP Forums. Oh I'm my. I guess so, all the MLP Forums guys saw the ad. <laughs> Yeah, I've got an ad running on MLP forms for it, but some people also find it from Google already. Oh, wow. And word is spreading a little around about it, and I expect when the site launches, it's probably going to get pretty big pretty fast, which is pretty awesome. Wow. I, I have to say, this is, an, this is a project that I like to be involved with. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, why not? It's music, and I host a podcast, so why not? Let me be the first there. <laughs> well, it's probably going to be a land rush race to get on at first. So but if you have an MLP Forum account, those Pony FM is actually going to share its account with MLP Forum. So oh, you'll okay. be able to log into both sites using the same username and password. So, so this works vice versa. When if you have a Pony FM account, you can also key into your MLP, MLP Forum account. Pony FM will basically be using NLP Forum's account. You'll use the same username and password for both sites. So, in hint, if you want, to, if you want to be one of the very first people on Pony FM, register on NLP Forum. Ooh, must do that soon. All right. So, Norman, do you have any questions for Fel? 
Oh, sure, I have a few. So, uh, Felt, how did you get started in website building? That's a bit of a long story. In 2010, I was an active member of another forum, but the administrator, the owner of that, of that forum, thought it was perfectly all right to visit the place about once every two years or so. Suffice it to say, management went to hell over there. It was still good when I joined, but it was already in decline. And about a year later, really, the place had become crap. Was it like 4chan out of control? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. All wow. the good members left and became bronies, really, eventually. But oh, all right. <laughs> Interesting. It left only really like trolls and unpleasant people were left, and the site owner didn't feel the need to give a damn about it. He later deleted the entire site just without telling anyone, but that's beside the point. Anyway, I was really frustrated with the way management was going there, and I was a moderator, but no one was really listening to me, and I didn't have any like real power to make anything happen as a moderator. So I decided, I'm sick of this place, I want to start my own forum. Oh. So ah. I clicked a little, powered by PHP BB link at the bottom. I found myself a web host and set up a little forum. I barely had any idea what I was doing, but I set up a nice little forum for myself, invited my friends from that other forum onto it, and things were all right except that it wasn't a very active forum, had way too many sections, which made it look dead, and the, the place closed down before it reached 2,000 posts mm. in about 10 months. Yes. But I still took it as a learning experience and later was put in charge of being the community manager at 3dsbuzz.com, which is pretty much the biggest news site dedicated to the Nintendo 3DS in the world. Mm. And I was the forum admin there, and I took care not to repeat my mistakes there and build a community that is still active to this day, although I resigned quite a while ago. When I resigned, five people replaced my position. <laughs> wow. Whoa. So you basically um, did the job of five people? Yeah, while I was in school, and at the time, I was 15. I see. I was, I was the only exception to the rule that staff members had to be over 18. And I held my job there longer than anyone else did. During my time there, I saw quite a few people get hired and fired, but I resigned willingly. During my uh, job at 3DS Buzz as the site editor and forum admin, I started working on a little Wii U site on the side, which is now WiiUgo.com. I'm proud to say that Wii U Go is the world's very first blog dedicated to the Wii U, which is coming out by the end of this year, finally. And I started that back in September 2010. Oh my. Wow, so long ago. So Wii U Go served as a bit of a testing bed for me to try a number of things with it. So through that site, as well as a now a since cancelled project, that I learned HTML and CSS and PHP and all that good stuff. Ah, all right. So you learned that all by yourself? Last year, yeah, I'm self-taught. Wow, awesome. I'm self-taught in pretty much everything web mastering. No one was like there to teach me. My, my parents aren't exactly into computers and stuff. So, yeah, I just hopped on the internet and learned from resources and stuff online. You know, it's a real blessing that you're a brony. <laughs> the and community then, totally needs you. Honestly, I just want to do my part to make the planet a better place to live in. That's really all. I really just find it a little sickening how many people just don't care about the fact that we're all homo sapiens sapiens here, and we should really be looking out for each other. But change happens one person at a time, and I try to be a nice guy but I'm so busy. Okay, it's cool. So, um, how many websites do you own? I'm going to have to count those. Because from what I see here, you have MLP forums, Pony.fm, Wii U Go, the Wii U.com, and your own personal site. So that's what? One, two, three, four, five. Am I right? There's a few more. Oh my. There's a site that I own that I've since cancelled, and I have over 30 registered domains. And... I'm also working on a new sister site to MLP Forms, not Pony FM, another one, which I'm not really ready to reveal anything about it yet, but I own it. Oh, it's cool. So. MLP Forms is the biggest, most impressive one by far, though. So I think that makes about for about eight sites, but over 30 domains. 
over eight sites and 30 domains. Do you have a team of people helping you manage your website or do you do it all alone? Well, right now I have 18 staff members working with me on MLP Forum. And I've got a few on my Wii U site. But as far as like all the technical stuff is concerned, I do it all on my own. Mm, okay, that's cool. So you have a team of people helping you here and there, but you do all the heavy work then? Yeah. I've seen your website and it looks like you're a Nintendo fan. How did you become a Nintendo fan? I've always had my eye on Nintendo, really, as long as I can remember. Back when I was still in grade one, my school had a Game Boy Color. I was part of this after-school babysitting club, and I remember we would always fight over who got the two play on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> um, I've really just always had my eye on them, and always liked the idea of well, playing video games. And Nintendo games have just always appealed to me for some of the same reasons that my book does. Like, they're accessible, they're nice and colorful, they never forget their video game, but they're amazingly fun to play. And there's usually quite a bit of good stuff in them for, well, so-called hardcore players to find as well. Um, it wasn't until just a few years ago, however, that my parents actually were willing to let me own a console. So what was your first so console? My first was... console Sorry. was the Wii. Oh. Ah. I was fortunate enough to get a Wii the day after it launched, November 20th, 2006. Oh my. And I loved the thing to bits. I later got a DSi. Um, I believe I begged my mom for eight years to let me get um, a Game Boy. And the Game Boy Advance came out, the Game Boy Advance SP came out, the DS came out, the DS Lite came out, and she finally let me get a DSi. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> did, you get a th- did you get a 3DS? And I have a 3DS now, too. Oh, is it the 3DS XL or is it the normal one? The normal one. Oh, okay, cool. So, I haven't tried it. I wonder how 3D looks like. Is it really believable kind of 3D? Yeah, it, it's 3D. It, 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 it's believable. It looks like a window. Like, the, the screen, it's just like a window into uh, the game world. That's really the best way to describe it. And because there are no glasses, it looks completely natural. It's much better 3D than what you get in cinemas with real D glasses. <laughs> now, I would really, really recommend it. There was the Especially the recent, because there's yeah. quite a few good games um, on it already and good games coming. I mean, because recently there have been like even smartphones that have 3D screens and those really don't look good. Oh, the 3DS is good. Uh, I wish I have one. I've heard terrible things about smartphones with 3D screening. The 3DS yeah. screen is really nice. Mm-hmm. Does me. it have a 3D camera by any chance? Oh, yes. It does. Ah, oh, okay. The cheapest 3D camera on the planet. Mm, all right. I'll consider getting one now. It records 3D videos, even. All right. It does it record in HD? No. No, it records at slightly below DVD resolution. Okay, I'm getting one. <laughs> the video quality isn't amazing, really. You don't buy 3DS for the camera, but it's still really cool. Well, I'll buy it to shoot a home vi- a 3D home video. <laughs> for that. <laughs> okay. Right. No, so, um, besides the Nintendo console, do you own any other gaming console? No, but I do own five computers, and I'm looking into getting a six. Oh, my. Before I got a Wii, um, all my gaming was on computers. Ah, okay. Um, my sister's boyfriend has a PS3, but it's not exactly mine. I'll be honest, I hardly ever get any time to play video games, actually, <laughs> because MLP forms takes up so much of my time. And I am planning to get a Wii U the day it comes out. Yeah, that's going to be my next console. Okay, cool. Oh, I just remembered something. The Wii U is going to have Mass Effect 3. Is it? Yeah, if I remember right, they said that they want to launch Mass Effect 3 on the Wii U. I believe they said they might consider it. I'm not sure if they ever confirmed it. Oh, uh, well, if... So much for, be- for owning the world's oldest Wii U blog. <laughs> well, I just heard stuff from websites that I browse around. What I what do I know? I have a podcast about ponies. That's all I do. <laughs> Let me see. Mass Effect 3 is going to be a launch title. Oh my. Nice. Well, now you can play as Commander Pinky. <laughs> Actually, since you said you mentioned that you have six computers, what's your preferred operating system? Windows 7. Mm. I don't consider myself a fanboy of any particular operating system, but... I like Windows 7 because it's gorgeous, it's very simple to use, and it is amazingly reliable. People say Windows crashes, it's buggy, get viruses, none of that crap with Windows 7. Yeah, really, 7 is one of the best to date. 
Windows 7 is amazing and it's very, very, very fast which I really love. Vista was a bit slow, and XP actually, XP is actually slower than Windows 7 on my computers it because is. it can't take very good advantage of modern hardware. It's, what, it's over a decade old now. The I'm not 60, really surprised. The 64-bit systems, you can't take it, I think. No, it can take it, but Windows XP just can't take full advantage of a modern computer. Windows 7 can, and just way faster, and prettier, and nicer all around. Not to mention that it has DirectX 11, which is gorgeous in games that use it. Have you tried out the Windows um, 8? Was that Windows 8? Uh, I, did, I did take a peek at Windows 8, but just wasn't really impressed. I can't see myself doing too much with Metro, being as I don't have any touch screens on my computers. And apart from that, it just seems like it's going to be clumsier to use, like with a mouse and keyboard, than Windows 7. That said, I might give it a second look and see if it has been improved since then, but Windows 7 still works really well for me. Okay, so it cool. looks like you're in the same bonus game, Newell. With that said, I have been working quite a bit with CentOS, which is a Linux distribution ever since I moved from shared hosting to operating my own servers. I don't run Windows on my servers, I run CentOS on them. And I have to say, there are some things in CentOS that I really, really love that Windows just doesn't have. Unfortunately, the, the problem is, is software. I can't get most of my games on Linux. I can't get the Adobe uh, Creative Suite on it, yeah. and I can't get Microsoft Office on it. I'm aware of Wine that can get some Windows stuff onto Linux, but it doesn't always work, and there's nothing like running software natively in the operating system it was designed for. Yeah, but that's true. There are some things that I really love about CentOS and Linux in general, and if I could get all my software on Windows and Linux, I would really consider switching. If only so I can have the same inv the same operating system on my servers and mm. on my desktop computer. That would really make developing PonyFM a lot easier. Have you considered virtualization? I have, but there's a bit of a performance hit with it. Yeah, and true. I really like having everything integrated into Windows where all my other files and everything are. Virtualization is a little, it's a clumsy alternative to just setting up all my, setting up my everything um, in one environment. Actually, for me, when I want to use my Linux stuff, I dual boot with Ubuntu. That's something I might consider, except that I've got a little bit of a hard drive space problem. I've got five gigabytes free. That's oh. not really enough to set up a dual boot. Oh, yeah, true. well, time to look for a bigger hard disk then. Maybe. I've got 107 gigabytes of Pony in here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I need to check mine. There was one Brony archive. I think it ran off Pony Borrow when it was existent. It was 7 terabytes big, I think. Oh my. 7 terabytes? I think it was. I can't remember. It had, like, iTunes rips. It had DVD rips. It had the YouTube episodes, the color corrected episodes. Oh, that all... Pony Archive? No, not Pony Archive. It, it was something else. Because Pony Archive was mostly torrents. Uh, Pony Archive hosted direct downloads as well. Their archive of stuff, I believe, about 120 or 30 gigabytes before they were shut down. Okay. Oh, well, um, those were my questions. So, um, Daniel, you want to move it on? Yeah, but just before that, Felt, do you have any questions for us here in Malaysia? Anything you want to know about bronies here? Well, first of all, does My Little Pony have any kind of official presence in Malaysia, or can you only watch it, like, through the internet? Yeah. Well, they recently launched on our local television, but before this, of course, um, they only launched just in July, 7th July, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh, wow. Do they air both seasons or just season one? Oh. They're starting from season one. <laughs> and it's just been a couple, it's just last month, it's just probably just been a month <coughs> since they started airing the first episode, and the bronies here, we've already completed all 56 episodes, so yeah. Well, of course, if you become a brony, you start looking for them on the internet and don't wait for or TV to air them. <laughs> True that. Um, how do you say that the spread of the fandom is in Malaysia? Hmm. Do you get a lot of bronies there? Is, it, is My Little Pony something that people tend to know about? Or just like, oh, them crazy Americans with their My Little Pony do hmm. that. That, that? That is an interesting question. Um, it's very mixed, actually, because, as I said, it was it's really prized when... It's really something we, we are really ecstatic about. Comes up to us and says something like Rainbow Dash is best pony. We'll have a total fangasm wherever we are at that moment. Because but, it's so hard to find people who are into such a thing, since especially it doesn't air here. 
True. And but it's at 8.30 a.m. on Saturday morning good. when you know half oh. the world is asleep. Yeah, but to be honest, um, most Malaysians, I think, are more into anime than cartoons. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's the sad part. And you know how, like, Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece, you know how those kind of show goes, right? It targets for the mature audience, the teen and adults. As for My Little Pony, yeah. it has that stigma of for kids. So not many people want to give it a shot. Yeah, but last year at Comic Fiesta Malaysia, which was um, our so-called um, equivalent to the American BronyCon, there was a presence of bronies and I was there and I was in surprise cosplay. And basically, a lot of people who are into anime, they know about us, but they don't, they're not into the show. They sometimes even watch it, but they don't consider themselves a brony. Well, you guys know what you need to work on. <laughs> yeah, but you'd be surprised. I was I I walked around Kuala Lumpur in my cosplay, which I was surprised. And basically, you will only know surprise if you're a real brony, since she's not in the show technically. And what happened is, I discovered I think about four or five closet bronies coming up to me and asking if I was a pony. That's surprising. Pun intended. Uh, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> you should tell them to join MLP forums. Oh yes. Well. I'm convinced and I'm going to join soon. Mm-hmm. All right, then. So let's wrap this up for tonight. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for us, you can drop something in our email inbox, which is currently empty. Indeed. And where could they send email to us? You can send email to us at the MBS show at gmail.com. And we check it every day. We're that desperate. And of course, <laughs> if you think an email is a little too long for you, you want something faster, just tweet us at the MBS show. We check that too. True indeed. And you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. You can also tweet me at St. Pinky. And Felt, do you have Twitter? Yes, I do. I have several Twitter accounts. My personal one is at Feldo. And remember that's at FBLV0. And I also watch my MLP forums and Wii U Go account. Those are at MLP forums and at Wii U Go. You can tweet me to any of those and I'll try to answer. Okay, cool. And also, if you have an iDevice, you can subscribe to us and rate us on iTunes. This link is in the show notes. Or if you're using an iOS device, just search for the MBS show in iTunes and you will see our podcast pop up right there. Remember to scroll all the way down. No, we're not a song. We're not an audio book. We are a podcast. Scroll all the way down. So, for this week's episode of the MBS show, I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Feldo. Thanks for having me as a guest. Sure, no problem. We love you as a guest. I mean, I can't wait to talk to you in the future. Seriously, we need to work on something with that Pony FM, really. Well, All right. we'll be in touch. Yep, yep. You know how to find me. I have your contact on Skype. Yay! All right, we'll see you next week. Bye. Memories of a sorceress girl And this fascination with the secret of the world
kind voice, a gentle face, a friend who vanished without a trace, a blue body, an illusionist on stage. Once a domain is gone, you can't get it back, right? You can, but the problem is anyone else can get it too. <laughs> that's, that, that's how I lost my first domain. I had a domain and I lost it thanks to the company that... They're just telling me, okay, uh, if you would like to... Up- they only gave me the option to upgrade. They didn't give me an option to cancel. So I didn't know how to transfer domain and basically it got snatched. Oh. Pro tip, use a reputable registrar in the future. That was when I didn't have a credit card. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> Because back when I didn't have a credit card, I had to go to the bank down the road from my house, put cash in the machine, and send it the slip. Wow. Oh, wow. And then I had to wait days in front of the computer. Actually, I waited three days, and I did sleep all night. That's shady written all over it. That's what? That's shady shady written all over it. Yeah, and I was waiting for, like, I was thinking, am I going to get, like, a super powerful DNS console? Am I going to get, like the best DNS controller, am I going to have my own mail exchange records and stuff? And then it come out, boom, I can only set A records. It sounds like a Russian businessman. You want website? I give you website. Pay me money, cross the street. <laughs> yeah, basically that, I was like, uh...